Hey guys, this is Voxide and in this tutorial we will talk about what the volume sample and volume gradient functions do and also give a few examples of how you would use them for a project. For more intermediate Houdini tutorials you can check out my courses, link will be in the description. For this example I have the rubber toy test geometry and we turn this into an SDF with a VDB from polygons and this has a low value of 0.02 and I have a simple point here which has a transform node applied to it which I can use to move through space. So if I were to preview all of these nodes and step inside a side view and let's template this rubber geometry we can see that this blue grid is the SDF volume for this rubber geometry and if I were to grab my point now and move it around this volume we can see that this value we have here is actually the SDF value. So this is computing the distance from the geometry and because this is a volume we have nice interpolated values and uh, really accurate values. You can see that this number goes all the way up to a bunch of decimals here which I actually just cut off so we can see that this is a very precise value. And I just uh, clip this just for the sake of visualization. So a volume sample function will sample whatever value we have in that respective voxel and in the case of an SDF it's going to be the distance from the geometry. And we can see that as I go inside this turns negative so this will indicate that we are inside the geometry. And what a volume gradient will do is it will give me a vector that points into the direction of increasing values. So if I were to turn on my visualization, I computed this vector with a volume gradient and we can see that this is the vector that we get. So it's simply a vector that goes in the direction of the increasing value, in this case the SDF. And if I were to go inside, so maybe over here the point is closest on this side and the values increase in this direction and if I were to switch sides now it will point in this direction since it's closest to this surface on the bottom now. So here in this attribute VOP is where I compute this volume gradient and I can go inside and we can simply see that this is just a simple volume gradient file which points to my second input which will be this VDB and the first input is just my point so we want to sample it from the position of the point and we want to look at our second geometry. Now this volume gradient vector is only useful to us really in its normalized form. So we can see now as I go back if I move it around we can see that this changes its length as I move it across the geometry or rather across the volume and so in order to work with this we need a normalized value. So we will just place a normalize after we compute it and now it's always going to be one unit length. So if I move this around it's going to be a consistent length of one unit. And what we can do now is if we multiply this vector by the SDF value at this position of the point we can get a vector that's going to be exactly the length from the position of the point to the surface of the geometry. So if I go inside my attribute VOP and drop down a volume sample node, I will sample the position of the point and look at our second input which is the SDF VDB and I can grab this normalize and multiply this by this volume sample. So we can see that if I were to go to my visualization and edit this direction vector I will set the style to be vector trail so now it will point in the other way. So this will sort of reverse the direction of the vector as far as visualizing goes. So if I go back up now we can see that as I move this point around we will have now a vector that points exactly to the surface of the geometry. So no matter where I move this point now we have the vector that goes exactly to the surface. So even if I step outside we can see that this is now this will now stick to the surface and it's important that your VDB has enough exterior voxels to work with otherwise if I were to step outside of my bounds here we can see that the point no longer finds a voxel to sample and we no longer have uh, the accurate so this gets stuck at 0.5 you can see it's no longer updating so the SDF value and also our vector is not computing anymore so as I step inside now the bounds 
we can see that this starts to work. So if you had a point that's maybe over here, outside of the region, you just have to make sure that your VDB has enough uh, exterior uh, voxels. So I would have to increase this value. So now we see we bring our vector back. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what we can do with this vector now is we can grab any point and as long as it is inside this volume we can grab its current position and if we subtract this vector now our point will fall exactly on the surface of the geometry. So for this example I have a simple circle which just emits particles in the z direction like so. And let's go in our perspective view for this and maybe we can remove the templated geometry and inside this pop net I will drop down a pop wrangle or rather a pop vop and we will want to use this SDF that we created so I will go up a level grab this VDB from polygons and I will control C go to my pop net and for inputs I will say the first one will be SOP and I just want this to point to my SDF VDB Okay, so now in my popvop I can access this SDF from op input 1 over here. Alright, let's do the same thing that we did earlier and I will drop down a volume sample and I will sample the current position of the points and let's point this to our VDB which is op input, input 1. Okay, so this will be our SDF value and we can actually just name this SDF value and I will drop down a volume gradient and the same thing here we will point to our SDF and sample it from the position of the point and we will just simply name this to gradient vector and again we will want to normalize this and we will multiply these two values now so if I multiply these we have our vector that will point to exactly the surface of the geometry so we want to subtract this, vo this uh, vector from the current position of the points so I will drop down a subtract from our current position and subtract this new vector and then I will want to update the position for each point so now we can see that they all jumped to the surface of the geometry and if I play the simulation now our particles stick nicely to the geometry and I'll just increase the point size maybe a bit to visualize this better so like I mentioned earlier it's important that these points are inside the bounds of your volume so for example let's template our voxels and if I were to make this a little bit smaller and maybe make our circle step outside of these bounds we can see now the result that this gives us is it will only affect the particles once it recognizes a voxel of the volume so it gives us this weird result where they are only going to stick to the surface when they are inside the bounds of the volume so that's just something to be mindful of and let's maybe just increase this back Okay, and bring this circle back. Alright. One other thing we could do is if I were to disable this pop of node for a second, so we just have our particles flying, we could say that I only want this sticking effect to happen if the particles are inside of the geometry. So I'll turn this back on and step inside. So we know that the SDF value when it steps inside of the geometry it will have a negative value so it will be less than zero. And so we can grab this SDF value from the volume sample and we can say, if I drop down a compare, we can say that if this value is going to be less than zero, which means it's going to be inside of the geometry, only then do this effect. So I can simply plug this into our multiply input here and if I were to preview this now we can see now that this sort of replicates the effect of a collision. So let me go back to my geometry and adjust the size of the points. 
So now this sticking to surface effect will only affect the points that are stepping inside of the geometry. So when the SDF value is less than zero, meaning a negative value. So here we are computing the vector that we need to subtract. And with this compare node, we are looking at our SDF value and we are saying, is this SDF value less than zero? And if it is, this bool will output a value of one. So now this will activate our multiply and we can subtract the vector. If this SDF value is not less than zero, so it's greater than zero, this bool node now outputs a value of zero. So this will now multiply our vector by zero and we subtract zero basically from the position, which just gives us our original position. So essentially this compare node a acts as a mask for our multiplication. So when we compute this vector. And as a result, the particles look like they are colliding with our geometry. And this whole operation is a lot faster to compute than the usual collision approach to simulations. So this will be faster than if I were to drop down here a static object and merge it in, down our stream. So this is the, the usual uh, way you set up collision. So these are just a few ways that you can use volume sample and volume gradient in your workflow.